what is the Nanmi Books Learning Center? Uh, the the Nanmi Books Learning Center is uh, are several uh, departments, but this is a special Nanmi Books Hands-On Science Center. Uh, we adopted science centers, um, famous and well-known all over the world. The founder was uh, Oppenheimer in San Francisco with his exploratorium, and now it is spread all over the world. But we changed the didactics, the uh, kind of teaching. We don't teach in the science centers. We present exhibits, we present phenomena, and let the kids, the students, uh, adults, find out what's going on and uh, what to learn by themselves. So there won't be any explanations? Nearly no explanations, center. all these small hints uh, at each uh, exhibit to know a, a bit what to do. It may be a question, it may be some sentence, uh, what to do to find the way, but then they are left alone, so they will develop the explanation out of themselves. Is this um, learning center modeled after the ones in Germany? Yes, this is a, a, a construction made like as in Germany by uh, Professor Lutz Fisser. He is the founder of the German Phenomenta in Flensburg. Um, he started in, the, um, I think, 1986 in Flensburg in the Bildungsuniversity. Uh, that means uh, in an educational university. And he was professor for didactics, didactics of physics. And he started with his students and let them develop exhibits like this and write about it, about uh, what to learn mm -hmm. and difficult possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, the new idea mm -hmm. which we overtook in Lüdenscheid, in our hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, Phenomenta Lüdenscheid. Mm -hmm. And we now helped Nanmi Books uh, to build this uh, science center with this other form of teaching. What is the main purpose or the main target that the science center would want people to learn when they come here? Uh, you can't go into a science center without learning. If you come in, you will be attracted by these exhibits. And if you are attracted, you, you will learn. Mr. Hans, I was just walking just now, as you told me, and then this, this Einstein here suddenly moved up as if, you know, it's not inside, but it moves up just like this over here. How come? And he looks behind you. Yeah, and he, he, he looks at me your, all the time. He yeah, follows you. He yes, follows yes, me. Yes, yes. Yes, this is a fine example for reception and illusions or deceptions. If you look on this face a bit, little bit more away, you um, uh, mix up this uh, um, image you see here with that what you have in your brain. You are accustomed to have the nose in the front. If you, from the very beginning of your life, uh, with your, your uh, mother or your father, you know that the nose is in the front of the face. And so you have this burned into your brain. And if you look on this exhibit, you think that the nose is here. And that's why you are decepted. You're looking on this nose from this way, but it's far away, but you think it's here. And if we do science, we have to be sure about this, what we, that what we uh, uh, see, what we feel, what we taste, what we do with our th senses. And um, uh, so we have be, to be cautious. What we see may not be the real reality. And that's what we want to show with an uh, exhibit like this. It's not only science, mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, reception as well. Mr. Hans, I was just a little bit out there, and then I would see myself upside down. And then the nearer I walk, I see myself just upright again. And enlarged. Yes, and that's, and enlarged. That's, that's fantastic. One mirror making two different pictures. If you look into an ordinary mirror, you have only one. Mm -hmm. And you can enlarge or make the, your picture smaller. But this mirror, this concave mirror, has two possibilities to make mm -hmm. a picture. And um, 
if students come in here, they will get these two pictures in their mind. And if you ask them uh, weeks uh, after or months after being here, here uh, uh, about that, what they learned about this concave mirror, they will repeat. They know it. Then, as is my experience as a as a teacher, they know it. And then uh, there's a question why. That's and, right. And I, then, want, I wanted to know too yes, why, right. how and, come. And then you can work out, knowing how a image, a picture is produced with a plane mirror, you can work out how it is made with this concave mirror. And you will find these two possibilities. But you do have to, to do some drawings to the blackboard to show how a, um, a ray of light going in here is reflected here and coming out here, and if a ray coming from this is reflected like this, and there, there will be the, the focal the, the, point. Yes, yeah, so a focal point and mm -hmm. uh, image point as well. And so you can explain why it's uh, uh, upright down, why it's uh, uh, enlarged and uh, in the right uh, direction. This is called the big race. So basically, we can just try and see which, which, um, which route would be the fastest for the ball? You may do it, but please be so kind and read uh, this question before. Is the shortest distance always the quickest way to the goal? Try by rolling the balls. What do you think is the shortest Okay, the blue way? one is the shortest, one, yes. definitely. This is the longest. Yeah, but this is the shortest. This is shortest. Do you think that the shortest way is the fastest? Is the shortest distance always the quickest way to the goal? Yes, of yeah. course. Of course, yeah. it's uh, the experience, experience, uh, experience from everyday life. Yeah, yes, uh, I think this would go the yes, fastest. Yes, and I think... You think the below. other one? Below. Below. Another one. Not the blue one? No. And the slowest, huh? <laughs> this is the slowest. This is the slowest, yes. That's, that's it. We do it again and look at yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the fastest. Ooh, this is the fastest, this is seen, the slowest. Yes. Yeah. The result is that uh, this track is steeper and the acceleration at the very beginning of this movement is higher than here and here. So this curved and longer way is the fastest. fastest. Not the shortest is the fastest, but it's with a uh, higher acceleration at the very beginning. That's why? That's why, yes. Ah, so this? This doesn't have yes, any acceleration. Yes, yes, at the end it's fine, but, yeah, in but the end it's, it's fine. Uh, uh, far, far behind because it's before it starts, uh, really starts. And so the starting is very important? Yes, the start is very important. Okay. As a sprinter in sports, if he starts very fast, he's in the front from the very beginning. In Thailand, the Hands-On Science Center is located at Nan Mi Books, Sukhumvit Soi 31. Hans told me that not only children that would have fun at the center, but adults as well. See you next time. Sawadee ka.